I myself is a Rohingya. And you know, I was born in Butidong Township in Rakhine State, but I left from there when I was uh, six years old. My parents were the civil servants, so they moved to the former capital Rangoon. And so I, I was raised in Rangoon for, uh, since I was very young. So as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> these people are living in the open air prison since 1992. So we didn't have much contact. They are completely isolated. So in 1997, uh, for the first time, I left from the country to join my father in Saudi Arabia. He was working there. He left uh, his government job and he was working there. So I joined him there and first, for the first time I heard from my father because, you know, my father also, uh, uh, he, uh, he was an uh, underground activist while he was serving the government. He has been focusing all the suffering of the our own people. So uh, for the first time, he told me that, you know, our people are facing the, you know, uh, this uh, serious persecution by the Burmese military and it is genocide. So, and also I have read uh, a few book, uh, a few report there. And, you know, like we have no, when I was in Rangoon, I, I, I could not hear anything from them because, you know, that there were no uh, uh, telecommunication and they, they didn't even have the landline phone there at their home. You know. Whenever they need to call to Rangoon, they need to go to the telephone exchange and they cannot share any anything whatever they are suffering because, you know, the, all the call are recorded and observed. So, you know, for the even for the medical treatment or anything they need, uh, they can just travel to Bangladesh with the special Bora Pass. Uh, it is very difficult, you know, only a few people can travel who can afford the a big bribe to the authority. So uh, whenever they reach to Bangladesh and they can start communicate with the people and they clear the, all the information they have. So I had a lot of things while I was in Saudi Arabia. Uh, so I came back to Myanmar again after a year and I continued my study. After I completed my study in 2001, I left again from the, my country. Uh, so it was the last time I was in Burma. So, you know, since then, uh, I have uh, I have interested about the plight of my own people. And, you know, we were reunited in Saudi Arabia uh, a year later in 2002. My mother also arrived there. And, you know, uh, so my parents, my mother also, she used to be a teacher and, you know, she was also the underground activist. So both of them, they convinced me to be an activist, to start the activism, because, you know, that this is the suffering of our own people. So I was convinced by them. And, you know, now almost 18 years I have been engaging in this uh, activism. And uh, in late 2011, uh, I moved to Germany and... Uh, since then, you know, I work full time for the uh, this uh, for my people and engaging full time activism. Yeah, for the media relation, I engage with all the media across the world. I have, I think, uh, I have spoken with more than three hundred media in these years, and I have been uh, I have been commenting on, on many television and radio and also the the print media and the online media. So, like you know, the all all the time I'm uh, whenever uh, the media, you know, they ask me the question, I give them the comment, and also like there are s s several hundred of Rohingya uh, 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 Rohingya detainees at the Jeddah uh, detention center in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they have been uh, detained for more than five six years now. So I have, I have launched the campaign since the past two years for uh, for their release, still not yet success, but you know, I have uh, raised this issue with the, uh, uh, all the media across the world in the different languages. So uh, I mostly I act as a spokesperson for the Rohingya. Oh yeah, motivate, you know, like they are my own people, they are my blood. You know, so as I know how to use the technology and as 
you know, the most important is how to use the social media. So I use the social media and, you know, I, I'm only one person, uh, you know, uh, in the Rohingya community, let's say first person uh, who had, uh, you know, the social media account with the verified pages. So th those accounts, you know, were mostly focused by the journalists and the, you know, the, the other people who are interested in the cause. So, so I, um, all the time I engage on the uh, social media and, you know, the, the people who are now in Bangladesh and the Rakhine State, they always send me the information and, you know, ask me to raise this on the social media or the blog or the, you know, the race with the uh, official. So this always, you know, they are encouraged my uh, encouraging my work, these things are motivating me. So while doing so, I have also got the attack by the Burmese military and the government. I was uh, publicly attacked by the, uh, this, uh, you know, the Aung San Suu Kyi office, state consular office, and also the pres presidential office, state media, the private media in Myanmar, because, you know, all the media in Myanmar are against the Rohingya, and they have attacked me publicly. And, you know, I have also received many death threats from the uh, Burmese Buddhists who are, you know, the majority of the Buddhists in Myanmar, they are completely, op uh, you know, they're opposing the, this Rohingya. They don't really like, they are always saying, you know, kill all this Rohingya. So they always send me the death threat through the, my Facebook messenger or the Twitter direct message that, you know, they want to kill me. You know, if they see me anywhere, they, uh, they would kill me. So one side, you know, my people are always encouraging that motivate me. On the other side, you know, I received the threat from the Burmese community. Uh, one thing I want to, uh, <coughs> what I want to add, add is the UN described that we are stateless people, but we are not stateless. We belong to Arakan state, now known as the Rakhine state, western part of Burma. Arakan was independent kingdom until 1784. In 1784, the Burmese king occupied it and it became part of Burma. So we belong to the Arakan state. We are indigenous ethnic group of Arakan state. We, we are not stateless. This should be known by the all international community that these people were expelled from their own land and they became stateless within their own territory.